All right, hi everybody. Uh, today we're going to be having a look at uh, the motion of charged particles in electric fields. Um, and this presentation is going to be um, broken up into two sections. So today we're going to be having a look at part one. Okay, so topic two is looking at the motion of charged particles in electric fields. And today we're having a look at electric potential difference. And basically we're gonna break this up into two presentations as I said before. So today we're having a look at um, solving problems using um, the use of the work formula, how to convert energy from joules into electron volts and vice versa. Now the derivation and some um, example problems will be covered in the next presentation. Okay. So the first thing we need to look at is gravitational potential energy. And we're all kind of familiar with gravitational potential energy and how it works here on Earth. So um, it's really useful to imagine um, something happening close to Earth so that then we can relate it to what happens um, near a charge. So if we're looking at a mass and it's within the gravitational field near the surface of the Earth, and over here we've got a diagram um, of a, a woman or a girl standing on top of a cliff or an edge, and she's holding a ball. Now, if she drops the ball, um, the ball is free to move and it will accelerate down. We know if we drop a ball, it's going to move away. It's going to head down towards the, the surface of the Earth. So as it starts accelerating, it acquires kinetic energy as it does this. Now, to account for the gain in kinetic energy, um, we postulate that the mass must have energy due to its position in, in the gravitational field. Um, so we call this gravitational potential energy. So whenever we lift anything up, we know that it has a certain amount of potential energy. Now what happens if we apply that same logic to a charged particle? So if we've got a test, uh, a positive charge here, um, as you can see here in the middle here, we've got positive charge Q, and it's got the, um, the associated diagram for its electric field here. Now if we put a positive test charge at this point here at point B, um, we know that due to that, the electrostatic repulsion between the two charges, a, a positive and a positive are going to repel. So if we're a positive test charge and we're placed at point B, we know that we're going to start to accelerate away from point Q. Now, if we're accelerating, it means that we have to acquire kinetic energy. So we have to account for this gain in kinetic energy somehow. And we, we say that the, the, um, the charge must have a certain amount of potential energy or um, energy due to its position in the field. And this is called electric potential energy, much like the ball in the previous example had gravitational potential energy. Our little charge at point Q is going to want to move away. It's going to want to accelerate. Um, and to do that, it has to gain kinetic energy, which means that it must have had some potential energy to start with. And that is its electric potential energy. Right, now this one can be a little bit tricky to actually figure out, and that is whether or not um, the charge is going to gain kinetic energy or whether it's going to lose potential energy. And it really comes down to what type of charge it is, whether it's a positive or negative charge, um, and whether or not the um, charge it's moving away from or going closer to is also a positive or negative charge. So up the top of this diagram, um, we have a, a negative plate or a, a negative central charge. Um, and what what's going to happen if our, our test charge is either positive or negative. So here we can see um, if we have a look at our positive charge and if we try to bring it close to or if it's moving closer to a, um, a negative charge, it's going to be accelerating. They're going to have a force of attraction. Um, and if it's got an attraction, it's accelerating, it means it has to gain kinetic. Um, and conversely, if it's gaining kinetic, it must have lost some potential. Whereas here, if we've got a negative charge and we bring it closer um, to another negative charge, we've got a force of repulsion um, and it's going to be harder to, to do that. And if we bring it closer, it's going to start slowing down. So if it's going to be slowing down because it's coming closer and, and not wanting to, to go much further, then it's going to be reducing its kinetic energy. It's going to be um, getting slower, so reducing its kinetic, which would mean that it's gaining a potential. Um, and it's similar but reverse if the plate is actually a positive one. So we look at the bottom of the diagram here. Um, if we've got a positive charge being close to a positive, it wants to slow down. It doesn't want to go there. So that would mean that it's reducing or um, losing its kinetic energy, therefore gaining potential. And conversely, if we've got a negative charge, it's going to want to accelerate. It's going to want to go that way. So it's going to increase its kinetic energy. Um, energy or gain in kinetic, therefore it's going to lose the same amount of potential energy. 
Okay, so that brings us to the crux of this presentation and we're, we're wanting to know about electric potential difference. So the potential difference between two points in an electric field is the work done per unit of charge in moving a positive ch test charge between two points. And that's provided that all other charges involved remain constant or undisturbed. So if we're looking at the potential difference, it means the work done divided by the unit of charge. All right, so the unit of charge. So work we know is a W um, and it's going to be, sorry, and, and, sorry, and charge is Q. So what we've done there is we've got here a potential difference, which we denote as delta V, um, potential difference or the change in voltage, as you might hear it called. Um, it can be written down as this new formula here. So the change in voltage or potential difference of um, electric potential difference is, di is the work um, done divided by the size of the charge. Now, um, one volt is also always equal to one joule per coulomb. And the joule per coulomb comes from this equation here, where we've got work measured in joules and charge measured in coulombs. Now, um, let's have a look at that as an example. So if a charge Q moves in the direction opposite to that of the force exerted on the charge by the field, then work is done on the charge. And that's a really fancy way of saying what we were saying before. If you have two positive charges and you try to bring them together, it's going to be hard. You're going to have to exert work. You're going to have to do work to, to get it in there. Um, now, basically, that means that we've got our new equation. Um, and we've got, uh, because of the law of conservation of energy, work done increases the amount of potential energy. So we can equate those two um, equations and, as we've got down here. Now, another way to think about that is the same way as if we think of a gravitational field. If we've got a heavy box and we do work on that heavy box by lifting it up, um, then it's going to have a increase in its potential energy. So it's exactly the same if we're trying to put it somewhere um, and do work on it by bringing them together, just like we were if we were lifting a heavy box, then it's going to have an increase in potential energy. Instead of this, in this case, it's going to be electric potential rather than gravitational potential with the box. All right, conversely, if we have a charge moving freely in an electric field, um, uh, under the action of the force in the field, then it accelerates and gains kinetic energy. So this is the same if we have two charges um, that are similar, it's going to want to accelerate away. Now, if we let it do that, it's going to gain kinetic energy. And therefore, because of our um, conservation of energy, if it's gaining in um, kinetic energy, it's going to lose our potential energy. So we have this uh, the, the same equated formula down the bottom. So the gain comes from a decrease in the potential energy. If we were lifting up a box, it's really easy to describe the amount of energy we've had to put in to lift the box. However, if we're talking about charges, um, it, the amount is so tiny um, that it's much more convenient to describe the energy change in terms of electron volts. Um, it's a much smaller unit than a joule, and um, basically it becomes a lot more manageable uh, when we're talking about the really small amounts of energy and work required um, within electric fields. So one electron volt is the work done when an electron moves through a potential difference of one volt or one electron volt is the energy gained or lost by an electron in moving through a potential difference of one volt. All right, so quickly looking at a couple of examples. If an electron, um, which is a negative charge or E minus, um, moves through a potential difference of 300 volts, then the change in potential energy can be written as 300 electron volts. One electron, 300 volts, therefore 300 electron volts. If we have a proton, um, which is a positive E, as we, we write that, moves through a potential difference of 200 and, uh, sorry, 2,500 volts, then the work is going to be equal to 2,500 electron volts. Now, it's the same. It doesn't really matter about the charge um, because the, the amount of charge is going to be the same because the proton and an electron are equal. 
Um, now, if we look at an alpha particle and its charge is positive two electron charge, uh, moves through a potential difference of 400 volts, then the change is going to be 800 electron volts. So two lots of electron charge moving through 400, two lots of 400, 800. Um, and the same as if we look at a nitrogen ion, it's got negative three electrons or a negative three electron charge, move through a potential difference of 50, then it's going to be three lots of 50, so its potential energy would be 150 electron volts. All right, so the work done and the change in potential energy can also be calculated in joules. Now, the work done is equal to the change in potential energy, which is also equal to the charge um, multiplied by the change in um, a voltage or the um, potential energy. Now, when we have um, a, the charge of an electron, we have 1.6 times 10 to the neg 19, and the um, potential difference we have as one volt, then we can see that the work done um, by moving one electron across a voltage of one volt um, would be 1.6 times 10 to the 19 joules. So it's safe to say um, that one electron volt will always equal 1.6 times 10 to the neg 19 joules. Okay, so thanks for watching. Uh, make sure that you stay tuned for the um, part two of this presentation that is having a look at the derivation of the expression um, uh, electric field strength vector and relating that to um, the equations that we've talked about today um, and also how to utilise some of those equations. So please take a moment to complete the questions on the next slide and happy electric fielding.